just really sorry about it. No, that's great. I'm going to ask that's a few okay. questions. Just how close should I be? You guys? Oh, be okay. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, how's your Fan Expo been so far? It's been really good, thank you. Yeah. Really good. Everyone's been, thank you very much for coming to us. Nice. Everyone seems to be having a good time, but the running theme is, um, well, it's here all weekend, and the ones who are, they're like, yes, tomorrow is going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I think they're coming today, and we're having good fun, so yeah. Cool. Now, are people um, surprised when they meet you? Like, have you had anyone yet say, where's your red hair? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. We get, um, normally we hear, you're a lot taller than I thought you'd be. Um, are you really English? <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, the, the other one we a lot of people hear is, um, oh, you dye your hair, my life's a lie. <laughs> I, you know, I dare tell them we didn't actually fly a broomstick as well. <laughs> Send them over the edge, but never mind. What, what was that process like for you, all those years, dyeing your hair? I mean, are you just so thankful you're all natural right now? I'm just thankful I've got hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, um, well, yeah, so we're 14 when we first started doing the movies and one of the first things we did when we were given the, given the part, we told three friends that we were in the film, that was it, no one else, and their reaction was, no, you're not. <laughs> no, we are, no, you're not. So anyway, we then went down to the studios for a read-through, which is when the whole cast get together and read through the script for the first time. And then after that, we then went and did a hair and makeup test. So they, they basically just painted some ginger on. <laughs> and it kind of worked. It didn't work. It didn't work. So, that worked. <laughs> so they said, well, would you be up for dyeing your hair? Yeah. Why not? Went back to school. Yeah, we're in this film. No, not. <laughs> so then um, a week later, we go down to the studios again, had our hair dyed. Looked in the mirror. I remember looking in the mirror like, ooh. <laughs> and then I then went to school the next day, and I, I got there on my own because I was a bit late. Um, never be late to school. <laughs> and as I was going in, there were some, like, I put like a six form, so like these 17, 18 year old guys going to school, and these two girls were like, I swear we used to have brown hair. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, you know, and then my mates who I told I was in this film, they're like, okay, you're taking this too far. <laughs> They didn't believe me, no, and then, um... Then we just missed nine months of school. Yeah, then we just missed nine months, so yeah. That's amazing. Uh, well, I know that you guys uh, toured so many different countries with the Harry Potter exhibition, which is amazing. I mean, what was that like for you? You know, the fan base obviously is so strong in so many countries, but I mean, this is worldwide. What was that like for you guys? It was great to come to Toronto five years ago. <laughs> to these different places and I think it's it's only when you do that you, you appreciate how big it is throughout the whole world and it was it was really cool because North America was the first stop on the tour so I wasn't just saying it but when we came to Toronto it was, it was quite cool because they sport us rotten we, uh, we were able to go check out the Leafs play we saw the Raptors play uh, and then when we weren't watching sport we were like doing uh, promotional stuff um, went to the top of like, the tower and, and all that, and then went down to the falls and went to a nice winery, which went down really well. So, <laughs> in, in the short, I think we were here for five days or so at the time. We sat for quite a bit of what Canada has to offer in that Nice. I know this is in Montreal, but did you try poutine? No, I've only heard about this today, but we've got a similar thing in, in England, but it's not called poutine. It's, 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 not, it's not even sounding that nice. It's actually just cheesy chips and gravy. Oh. No, we're pretty picky about the gravy, and it has to be cheese curds. Okay, somebody get, somebody get these boys. Yeah, if, please, yeah. Dad. Um, but no, we did. I did actually get to see quite a bit else of the country as well. So we saw. Let's say we went to Montreal before came here. It's never been there, so we get to anyone from over there. Um, and then we also, and then last year James and I were, well, the year before James and I were able to go to Calgary and Edmonton. 
Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we did it in November, so that was... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if I was going to go back, it would be in the summer. <laughs> it's very beautiful in the summer. I mean, I wish it was as long as the winter, you know? But that's okay, that's okay. Well, we're very excited that you are here, and I'm sure so many people in this audience have questions, so this is what we're going to do. We have Gordon right over here, and we also have Stefano right over here, so if you guys have some questions, uh, I see them running. Uh, please line up and we'll get to you guys as quickly and wow. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been doing candles for a few years and I've never seen this before. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> oh my wow. These better be good questions. Are we, are we gonna have a massive turn of war or something in a moment? Snape's getting involved. <laughs> Gordon, you ready? Okay, you guys start off. Hey guys. Hey. Hello. Yep, yep. Just shout. Okay, out of the two of you, which one's better looking? Me. Ready? Right. I'll say me. <laughs> um, we're identical twins. <laughs> All right, so I got two questions. First question, Fred and George, put your hands up. Fred? Your favorite shenanigans pulled on set during the actual filming of all of the Harry Potter in general. What's your most favorite shenanigans? Right, well unfortunately we didn't like the episode, which is, there's, there's a few what can't be told. But, yeah, this thing, fortunately playing jokers, we could always joke about and get away with it. But we're in character, sorry. Um, I think the one what I remember was when we had one of the makeup girls who was a trainee, she, uh, she pulled a prank on us one day, I can't believe she did, like something. Like, uh, great, that was it. <laughs> so I thought, okay, how can we get them back? So we had a uh, hiatus, a six week hiatus, and she went away to the coast in the UK. But she wouldn't, she wouldn't shut she up about, shut about going, to this, uh, going to Nuki, which is like a service beach. So, okay, great. And I was so happened to be there a week before she was there. So I found out the address of a car park. Where she was staying. <laughs> and Colonel Sir Short, we mapped out a full script of um, like where she parked a car and called her up, pretending to be from the car parking agency. <laughs> basically informed her, and we recorded this whole conversation and basically informed her, by the way, uh, we only get in touch with your car registration plate. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, right, well, my job is to get in touch with you because your limit has just exceeded a thousand pounds. We need to speak to you. And this is an 18 year old girl who's just left school. First <laughs> job, and she's an apprentice. So she's not an internship. She's not getting paid for it. Uh, so we basically just said to her, well, look, um, I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to repossess your car. If you can't pay it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you can just hear it go quiet the other end. And we're looking through the window. <laughs> no, she's just like, well, I, I don't know. I said, well, you know, yeah. And we're doing it with a very smug voice. Well, I'm afraid, you know, if you, uh, what, what, what job do you do? So, I'm a hairdresser. Well, you're going to have to cut a lot of hair to do. <laughs> anyway, get cut long story short. We said to her, well, look, do you want to appeal? Yes, I want to appeal. Okay, great. So, uh, you can give me the number, gave her a false number, phone number. I think it was for like child or something. <laughs> and then uh, I said, well, if you want to send an email. Oh, great, okay. So I said, the email address is um, Mohammed Jafar Ayu. Oh, do you want to spell it? Yeah, okay, so I spelled it O L I V E. You read this here. O L I V E R P H E L P S. Yeah, write this down. Yeah, write this down. At uh, G O T Y O U dot com. <laughs> Okay, so do you want to read that back? You! <laughs> and then ended up, and this is the day of Bluetooth, so you could Bluetooth it across the whole studio. <laughs> so that was a, a long winded answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a teacher, and I was talking to you guys earlier, and I teach um, 
um, one of the subjects I teach is English literature, and my students are obsessed with Harry Potter. And I was wondering if you guys would be willing to say a little message to my class as the personas of the Weasley Twins. Oh. <laughs> Do you really want the Weasley Twins? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, study for your exams, but you may not finish them. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> no, that's not a good one. <laughs> Fred and George would say, stay in school. <laughs> you both got in there. You both got in there. <laughs> yeah. Futures lie outside the world of academia. Academic, excuse me, I can't even speak. Hello. Um, so, aside from each other, obviously, who has been your favorite member of the cast to work with? <laughs> no pressure. Nobody's here. You're the two on here, aren't you? <laughs> To be honest with you, we were so lucky for the huge array of people that were what were there. Um, Rupert and Tom, we were good mates with them anyway, so that was, they were always good, good laugh to work with. Adult-wise, as it were, when we were filming, um, Julie Walters, who played our mum, and Michael Gambon, they were really just, I mean, they, they were all amazing, but they, they in particular were really great with us. So, but I can't really give you a, just him. Or just her. Like, in general, we had a, a great camaraderie with everybody. Were there any actors that you were intimidated by? Because there are, you know, these well-known British actors that are working on the set with you guys. Kind of. Um, but only intimidated for the first, literally the first second when they walk in. Yeah. Um, I can remember when Gary Oldman walked in to the, the hair makeup. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I, he's a really nice guy. So that was again, they were very good at putting us all at ease because we're all. Like just in awe of everybody. But all the adults, I think it just shows a true professional is one who engages with everyone else and puts everyone else at ease. Um, so it's kind of, we learn a lot of how to act, act, and a lot of how to act around and on the set as well. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Um, so the scene where George is mourning Fred's death in the entire Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler! On a DVD! The scene where George is just mourning Fred's death as well as the rest of the Weasley family. Rubbing in, go on! As well as the rest of the Weasleys. I've heard many things. One being that, James, you fell asleep, and two, that there were some tears. Can we hear what really went on? Uh, both are true, actually. Uh, <laughs> so, first of all, James did fall asleep. <laughs> Rehearsal. And, uh, and I, I was actually crying. Um, it was kind of, it was a bit of both. Like, one, because um, the way David, the director, told you is to make it real. So, imagine or go back to a, a time in your past where you've been in that situation. So, like, a family member's died or something like that, which gets a bit, you know, gets, gets you going. And then before each take, we did three takes of it, um, one of the makeup girls would come up with a stick of eucalyptus powder. <laughs> and, <she'd> go, <laughs> and that's like tear gas to your face. <laughs> so that, that was where. But, but I've read some real crap on the internet um, saying that we hugged, told each other we love each other. <laughs> I guess we left James on the floor and we went to that. <laughs> and that's what really happened. Um, I wanted to know what your funniest or most memorable fan encounter has been. <laughs> I don't know if they go in the same sentence, those ones. Um, <laughs> funniest the most memorable. One was, um, we were at the Harry Potter theme park in Universal, and 
we were walking down, and basically we were doing a long story short, doing some press, going from one bit to another bit. And as we went past, there was a very, very famous basketballer. I won't say who, but a very, very, very famous basketballer, who is a very, very, very huge Harry Potter fan. Big, and a big fan. And stuff. It's, it's not Shaft. It's not Shaft. Oh, Tony Brian. Yeah. Anyway, he was he was really cool and just chatted about it. So I was like, this is amazing. And he was, this is amazing. So that was very cool. Um, another one would be we were filming in Newcastle, which is a town in the northeast of England. And we were filming there one day, and at night we just went out to eat. And as we we're walking down the road, these girls are kind of walking up the road. Yeah, up the road. Walking, and then they Clocked all over myself and a couple of other the cast, and then they started going, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and started chasing us. <laughs> and we started running. So, after about five minutes, we were all getting tired, and we're like, Why are we running? Like, so, we kind of stopped and looked, and we're like, Hi. And they were like, Oh my god, hi. Uh, <laughs> then they ran off, so then it was like, Yes. Hi, um, I was wondering what your tips or tricks, tips are for crying or laughing on, on command. So tips for crying. <laughs> <laughs> the eucalyptus. <laughs> um, if you want to make a boy cry, then... <laughs> And for laughing on set, you can kind of, it's amazing how, if you're in a relaxed environment, how easy it is to laugh and have a good, you know, have a good joke. <laughs> especially, <laughs> oh, God, no, no, no. Um, especially with, um, like when, you, when you hang around with your mates. So when we were filming, the amount of retakes we had to do when we were filming with Rupert, <laughs> crack of laughing for no reason at all. <laughs> but I think laughing on cue, just, just think of something funny. And if dialogue is really funny anyway, that's a lot easier to do. Or if something's happening in the scene, you can laugh a lot easier at it. So just use your imagination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we both had an amazing idea that we would try and get both of you to do a short freestyle rap for everyone. <laughs> I'm into a metal, not really rap, so I can't really do that. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, show us how to do it. <laughs> no, but freestyle, freestyle, freestyle. About... We were going to give you whatever topic you want. Fan Expo, Fan Expo. Oh, come on, any you want. Especially when you don't know where your next job's going. So 
I remember once chatting with um, Mark the Gambon and he just said, I'm just, I'm just doing it. <laughs> just kind of the attitude I have about stuff like you just get on with it, have fun with it. And I think it, it did take a while not to be George on camera because you have this mindset that you're on, you've got a camera face and that you, you can mess about. Maybe not the right idea when the guy's, you know, you're playing a character who's just being, I don't know, chased by the police or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you kind of just, you almost have to step back and learn again what, what, what it is to be an actor about pretending, making it real in your head. If you can visualise what you've got to do, then that's how you succeed it. So, yeah, a long-winded answer. I didn't get one bit of advice, <laughs> per se, but there's a lot of different bits on the way. <laughs> Hi. Um, out of all the Weasley products, which one's your favorite? Frank? <laughs> Describing snack boxes, um, any product in there would be my favourite. Especially the nosebleed new guard. You can say, you know, get one. The nosebleed new guards would be my uh, favourite. Um, I think that'd be quite funny to watch. <laughs> Come on. Um, mine would be from in, in the movies. You see, there's a big part where they they do a, uh, a pimple removal cream. <laughs> and I think if I could bottle that, <laughs> it would be the best selling product of the time. I wouldn't even bother with a joke shop, we could open a cosmetic shop. <laughs> or, knowing Fred and George, they sell one or gives you pimples. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. My question is, is did anyone ever mix you guys up on set? And did you use that to your advantage to make any pranks on anyone? <laughs> um, yes, people did mix us up. Actually, Tom was one of the worst, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he still is. He still is, I still is right. But the, um, some of the crew did quite a lot. And there was one, one, one little story. Um, there was one AD who was there for the first four movies. So that's four or five years of shooting. And she would say, oh, I'm I don't even remember it, but basically I've got a little mark there where I've had chicken pox as a kid. Don't pick chicken pox in the shop. Or let your brother do it. <laughs> and so anyway, years later, my, she said to my dad, um, hey, James told me how to, how to tell the difference between them is because he got shot by a farmer. <laughs> and then I was like, what? No? Five years, this lady thought that I'd been shot by a farmer. <laughs> but Oliver wasn't, and he said, yes, because Oliver wasn't, um, not, you know, he was more sensible not to go in a farm. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it would be, it's got to be the elder one, surely. Yeah. Invisibility cloak. Basically, I went to so I went to a Jays game the other day. And the, and the only seat I could get was in the gods. So I was like, I think I was just past the CN Tower. <laughs> if you had a you could actually sit on the field. <laughs> so yeah, so I would use it for all of the right reasons. In the books, uh, all the characters have, have like a Patronus. What would your Patronus be? In character or in or just, real, like, life? Just real life? Me. I think mine would be a sloth. <laughs> just chill out. That'll be me. Yeah, sloth. <laughs> I'd be a hedgehog. <laughs> because they're big, but cute. Very deep, very deep. Hi. Um, in the whole Harry Potter series, who's your favorite Death Eater? Oh. 
Dan heb ik ook man. Wees je ons. Start by J.K. Rowling to be given deep, uh, you know, insight to Snape's character. Did J.K. pull any, pull you two over to tell you more about Frederick George's character to help you sort of get a subscript for them? Not really. Um, she she did actually mention uh, where the characters who who they were based on, as it were, um, but not really where they're going right. Really. The first time I, I was reading the last book, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was reading the, uh, the book. George oh, is it? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and then the end, actually, I put it on a lot worse. <laughs> Creatures in the Harry Potter um, books, I guess. Which is your favorite? Well, my favorite book would be the Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh, well. the and then creatures. And the creatures. creatures. Oh, the book. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite creatures. My my would actually be creature. <laughs> I think this is a miserable son. <laughs> He's like creature. He's like Oliver playing golf. It's just. Is that my life? No, it's just you're like you're like uh, you're like the big spiders playing golf. Oh, he's in the trees. <laughs> Potter series, and you would have say what it was about, what would you want to happen? I think for one thing, <laughs> I would like there to be a long comedy series based in the joke shop. Oh. With, with George and Ron running it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm the person who's driven by this at all. <laughs> I would have the safety alarm, you know, if people ever steal anything, it would be Fred's ghost. <laughs> all right, hi boys. Um, first of all, James, saying you love metal, that just made my day. I was just saying you're the same Metallica. Second of all, a question. Um, obviously, as twins, you were most suited to the Weasley twins, or maybe the Patel twins, but if you guys could pick a character other than the twins, who would you both like to play? Um, mine would be Peeves. <laughs> characters are from the age of 14, which is kind of when you start learning who you are as a person. And you're being told, I just mess about. <laughs> make, make these people laugh, do this, do that. Um, so that, that does seep into your mindset a bit, and that very, you do get a bit of a, you know, say there's a sign that says, don't go this way, even though it's clearly the, most easy, the best way to get there. <laughs> so that, I think stuff like that is like the characters. Or I'm just a... I'm just lazy, that's the main thing. For me, they definitely, definitely rubbed off because just doing this right now would have scared the living hell out of me. But 
back in the day. Um, but when we first started filming, I was very shy and quite, yeah, just shy, that's the best way to describe it. Um, and I was always, not sulky, I didn't mean to sulk, but I was kind um, of like a visual. Yeah. Um, not for any reasons either. But I always remember we were on the. Shut up, I'm telling you a story. <laughs> This would scare the hell out of me. And then, but playing the part of Fred, kind of, you have to be outgoing because if you're trying to play the class clown, the class clown isn't the guy in the, in the back kind of just sulking. He's the guy at the back laughing. <laughs> so that's where I, I kind of thought, well, I'm gonna, I was doing that at work anyway, and I thought I'm going to give this a try in general, and I did, and um, I'd say it is a great thing to do because I'm being a lot more upbeat. And I laugh a lot more as well, so um, I'd recommend it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the DVD, and yeah, uh, uh, um, yeah, definitely it was. Uh, I think just having fun. Like, life's too short to be serious all the time. So. Yeah. Hi, um, I just want to know what your best and worst moments on the set of Harry Potter were. Let's, let's start with the worst moments. <laughs> no, my best moment would be in the fourth movie, when we're all, uh, they have the Yule Ball, and unfortunately you guys didn't get to see this bit, because for some legality reason they had to get rid of it. But they had the Weird Sisters, and they had a concert in the Great Hall. They had a stage set up bigger than this, and they had basically Radiohead with Jarvis Cocker. And we were like, okay, this is pretty cool. And they were playing a, they were playing a gig, uh, one take, and they just played all this different stuff. And they said to us, like, I'm going to start a mosh pit. Just dropping shoulders on people. And then they had Warwick Davis crowd surfing. Um, and we didn't know what was going to happen. They had all these speakers at the back of this, uh, where basically the stages um, where all the teachers sit, that was, that was the stage. And they had loads of speakers. And at one point, all the speakers like, started shooting smoke out. It's like, absolutely amazing. Um, in the Great Hall. In the Great Hall. So, I'm sorry that it was one of those you had to be there stories, but that was, that's my favorite. Oh, so you leave me with the sad bit? Yeah. <laughs> I don't cry. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm very fortunate. I don't really have any sad, sad days, if that makes sense. Because we're, we're all such a big group of mates, so I've had a, a good laugh all the time. Did I have a last you day? You spoke and you spoke and shh. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, actually, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you oh, one. All right, go on, you take it. <laughs> um, I think the last day of filming was pretty weird because we knew that it was, that was it because the next day they were bulldozing the studios. <laughs> and so we're, we're, waiting to, we're waiting to film this scene and it's the, there's a scene where Fred and George are talking to each other, overlooking Baltimore's army turning up. So we can play the decision, you're right, type of thing. And um, that, that was the weirdest one, because we knew that we'd never, ever film ever again for Harry Potter. As I say, they, there's a JCB digger right outside, ready to tear this thing down. And, um, and we were like, okay, this is it. Ten years gone. Um, God, you're going on the hard strings here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was that was the saddest day in Harry Potter for me. Well, thanks for coming. Hi. Um, since you played it with the trans for so long, can you tell us a joke? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I saw, I heard it really bad, like, it shouldn't be repeated, okay. Yeah, right, on, I got it. So, there's two slugs in a race. Okay, the one that comes up and he's really bad. And they say, uh, they 
Yes, uh, have a look. So the doctor goes up to him and takes off his shell. He's uh, looking a bit sluggish. <laughs> It's a snail! Two snails, darling! No, you said snakes! and the, the huge grey beards come on. And these things are worth, I'm trying to think what is in Canadian, let's say 10 grand. But, yeah, 10,000 Canadian dollars. And so you can see them, so the director's saying have a fight, and the hair and mega people are like, no. <laughs> Just hit, hit him on the arm, don't do anything. But that was, that was really good fun. And then, but we weren't doing it correctly. And so the director said, right, you also fight me. So I was like, alright, I will. And so Oliver literally threw the director of the... No, 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 no. he jumps on me and Mike knew he was a big guy. <laughs> so Oliver threw Mike <laughs> off him and uh, the most important man on the film set and Oliver broke his rib. <laughs> Bruised his rib. Bruised his rib. <laughs> so we went, yeah, he had to go to the, uh, he went to the doctor's for that, though. Yeah. But actually, while, while, while he was at the doctor's, um, there was a lady who went in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes! And, um, and she got kind of shoes and she says, Doctor, I'm, I'm having a terrible, terrible time. Uh, my, uh, my husband's having, having chest pains. So the doctor says, right, okay, well, um, give him these pills. Have one Monday, skip Tuesday. Have one Wednesday, skip Thursday. Have one Friday, come back Monday. So she comes back the following week. Says, uh, so how's your husband? She says, terrible doctor, he died. <laughs> Sorry, was it, was, it, was it the tablets? She says, no, it was the skipping. On <laughs> 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 behalf of the Phelps family, I want to apologise. <laughs> I try, I try. Go on, you try. For those of you that don't know, you guys guest judged a uh, 
performance while a competition on King of the Nerds, which uh, included them going down a zip line with a broom between their legs, aiming paintballs at targets. Uh, how did you think of their performance, and do you think you could have done better than them? We had to go, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically, for those who don't know, Olive and I run a, a game show in the UK called King of Nerds. Right. And um, Oliver and I, they asked us to want to come down for a day and judge the contestants. And they set up this zip wire where they had to fly down with a broomstick, dumping stuff into targets, is that right? Then, yeah, it was over a year ago when we did it somewhere, I remember. Um, but I remember the one guy got caught up there, didn't he? He wasn't very... Yeah, he was squeaking and he was having quite a high voice. Poor <laughs> <laughs> little fella. <laughs> No, it was, it was good. It was good. I think they did a good job, though. It's, it's very fun. But everyone look out for that show. It's, uh, <laughs> um, are you ever sad? Like sad when people can't tell you apart? Can you tell us apart right now? <laughs> 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 no, don't worry. We've been uh, called a lot worse things than are you James or are you Oliver. So we're kind of used to it. With um, we're what, 29 now. My whole life, I've been people get used to me thinking I'm James, which sometimes it comes in handy. <laughs> we have a game sometimes when we go to uh, like a charity benefit dinner. That we'll uh, like you get an iPad on the table and you can bid for side auction prices. <laughs> <laughs> and we, well, James didn't know it at the time, but we were playing a game. Um, <laughs> and at the end of the night, James was the proud owner of a, a huge. It was a big frame full of, I guess, I guess you guys had baseball cards years ago, but they were uh, in cigarette packets, like little trading cards. But these were cricketers from the 1900s. <laughs> which I got, and James ended up having to pay it because he was on. Um, it was very nice because I got it as a Christmas present. <laughs> so sometimes having, uh, having a twin brother comes in handy. <laughs> Routine that you did, or something weird that you did to prepare for your character? I dyed my hair ginger. <laughs> and the eyebrows. That was the worst part, actually. The eyebrows were the worst part. Especially um, if you leave it to an intern. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver actually had his eyebrows burnt off, having them dyed by the intern. Oh. Which left about two months. <laughs> she had one of a weird head, don't have eyebrows. <laughs> so you just see like the, uh, the makeup lady coming and go. <laughs> so, uh, for about a week I had like little ginger drawn on. Uh, it's quite good when you go home so you could do like an angry face. <laughs> but in, in regards to getting um, in character, to be honest, I think the only time I actually had to properly prepare was if we were doing quite a morbid scene. Like if the characters were supposed to be quite sad. But that was well, a... Uh, double -double Sorry? Dumbledore. Dumbledore popped in. Yeah, that was exciting. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> I didn't do very well. Um, yeah, I'd say that that was the, the, the one part was when you've got to be serious. Especially with Rupert as well, because we would always giggle like the school girls. <laughs> so, but in regards to anything else, we, it was we were pretty good because we were able just to have fun. That was pretty much what we were always encouraged to do. Hey guys, so Louise and Twins were my favorite characters throughout the entire series, and when Fred died, I got so mad I actually threw my book out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and I got my head to and it was raining. So which character's death, besides Fred, emotionally affected you? Serious death. <laughs> Apart from Fred. <laughs> Like, can I just go away from it? I'll just say Fred because it was it was actually pretty. <laughs> it was a bit of a thing for me. <laughs> no, I had no idea. It was the the book came out and I was in Japan at the time. I was on a bit of a holiday touring around, and I was on the bullet train going down there. And it's actually a true story. I was reading when it came to it, and then I was literally, literally at the time I read what happened. I was like. And then I'm going through all these really mixed emotions without being dramatic and <laughs> it, was, it was actually like reading that 
my, my, a mate of mine had died. It was really, uh, that surprise, not only was I surprised by what happened in the book, but I was then surprised that I was feeling surprised that this was going on. So I'm going through all this. Meanwhile, the ticket inspector. Ticket, ticket, ticket. I'm like, oh, mate, you've just died here. Yeah? Which is, um, yeah, so that's, that's going to issue my memory. Uh, so when we got to the town that we were, we were staying the night, I kind of got up and I was just a bit like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, sorry, I've got to, I've got to say friends to my friend. Sorry, I was getting a reaction. Next question. I have two questions. The first question is, what is the weirdest thing that you have ever seen a fan of Harry Potter do? <laughs> yes. My signature <laughs> cool. And my second question is, do you solemnly swear that you are up to the <laughs> Did you guys ever switch and play each other's roles on set? And if so, did anyone ever notice? Uh, no and no. <laughs> Basically, we, we did for a rehearsal of a great hall scene, and the camera is looking at everybody in the whole crowd, like all 500 people in the room. And Oliver and I were sitting like that, and then we decided for a rehearsal. <laughs> that was it, that was the only time we ever switched. We stupidly told a reporter this once. But now, apparently, from a, from a weird student blogging site, we wanted to make a story. Well, God knows where it came from, but then, uh, next thing you know, apparently, we were caught switching roles all the time, that to reshoot half the second movie. <laughs> and we got written letters from Warner Brothers and all this stuff. <laughs> Just to put the record straight, we were very professional. <laughs> So, uh, yes, unfortunately, though, we did sometimes fill in for each other if, uh, if one was poorly on a day. So, that'd be about it. Did I skip? Okay. Yeah. How did they decide who was going, or who and how did they decide who was going to play Fred and who was going to be George? And yeah. then once they decided and he died, did you think, oh, I wish I was George? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone here has seen or read the last. <laughs> I um, that's good. That's really good actually because when we uh, we read the, uh, the script, the first script through, and it was the first real movie script I'd ever read. So it's like, wow, it's good. And they said you have to go for the read through, which is where basically all the characters sit in a room around a big table with the director and the writer and the producers, and you read your part through, so they can gauge timing with the film. So it's the first time we met half the cast as well. And we were uh, we were sat there and we were like, oh, I still don't know who's who. <laughs> quite shy, lads, never done this before. But Janet, who's the casting director, she just said like, I said, um, who's Fred and George? And she went, ah, oh, good, good. <laughs> no, no, she said, you're kidding, right? And so she, you see a wall around the room, Right. And she goes up to Chris Columbus, director, David Hayman, producer, and J.K. Rowling. And you see them talk around, and they look down, and then go back up, and she comes, you know, and back. Yeah, James, you're Fred, I love you, George. So, we like to think that what happened was, oh, can you not remember that massive conference call we had in Burbank? <laughs> um, but more than likely, they went, oh, um, <laughs> okay, so you guys had the Marauders map for all of Fred and George did. Do you think if you had Harry's invisibility cloak, you would have been able to play better plant pranks, or do you think you did well without it? Yes. I don't think it probably would have hurt, but they seem to do pretty well without. And I think it's part of it, isn't it, really? 
to get cold, you get cold. <laughs> I've done any of this. So sure. <laughs> <laughs> clear. Yeah. Are there any characters that you guys have always wanted to play, either as twins or solo? I've always, I've always thought about a, a show where you could have a load of, not just twins, but triplets, like multiple birds. Because the, the, the DNA structure is the same in terms of blood and all that. So you could have people who are going to be an alias like, and they're all villains. They're all villains. <laughs> and they've got an alibi. So if they get caught, they're like, well, no, it can't be him because he was seen. You know, <laughs> you know, it's really not a successful series of that. <laughs> With no jokes that I write myself. <laughs> Apart from that time, and uh, mangoes to the governor. Uh, do you get kind of annoyed when people refer to you guys as the twins rather than like separate people? Yes, actually. <laughs> I'm going to make a stand right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to be honest, it's, it's something that I'm used to from the year that I can dog. Um, but the, we're always raised as individuals, we're never referred to as the twins. And so much so, normally, if someone tries to be smart and calls twins or twin, I ignore them. That's not my name. <laughs> it's, I call them something else back. I'll call them something else back. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's like, I mean, I know it's just, it's just ignorance. It's not real. <laughs> it's, I, always, I always remember doing an interview once and someone said, so what's it like being a twin? <laughs> and the first thing in my head I wanted to was, what's it like being an idiot? <laughs> It's just one of those, one of those stigmas, I suppose. Like I, I think, do you feel it if he gets hurt? <laughs> yeah. not Only on my fist. <laughs> I'm so sorry to be the one to say this, but we only have time for one more question. Oh, I pressure. Okay. Hi. So could you just quickly say hi to my sister, Caitlin? Is that the question? That's, that's the not the question. question. That's not the question. That's not the question. That's the last question. Hi, okay, Caitlin. You're all right. Okay. <laughs> and um, you said that on the set that you didn't switch places a lot. So did you like never switch places? Because you're wasting something. <laughs> <laughs> did you not just hear the last answer? <laughs> no, we really didn't swap places when we were gone. Like ever. Oh, Emma, do you swap it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we always do that. Um, legally, <laughs> have I ever been James? Um, yeah, I'm a couple of times. But the worst one, well, the only thing I can relate to isn't, it's not me, so I'm trying to make this interesting. <laughs> the um, guys that, they were more like Fred and George than we were at our school. We're in our year group at school, I think there was four sets of twins. So there's something in the water in Iowa. <laughs> and um, the one guy was really good at cricket and the other guy was really good at science. And both of their exams fell on the same day. And they both switched. So the one guy who was good at cricket played cricket as his brother. And the other guy who was good at science took the science exam for his brother. But they had a rap. Well, the one guy went into school the next day to be told, why are you here? You're suspended. <laughs> so it turns out the cricket player had a row with the umpire. <laughs> yeah, so um, we learned then never trust your brother. <laughs> okay, and I was just kidding, we have time for one more question. Hi, uh, she just asked about the other roles, so I'm going to switch it up and say, would either of you ever want to be on Doctor Who? <laughs> It's, I think it's cool when you come to these, um, when you come to conventions and stuff, you realise that you, you're kind of in your, your own bubble, in a pot of bubble for us in these things. But it's only when you come to these things you realise how big other fandoms are and what they mean to other people. And when you see that impact, you can relate to it that, okay, we've had a slight part in someone's life, and if you could be part of it in another sense, that would be good. Maybe he's a really good Doctor Who bad guy. <laughs> or two.
Yeah, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for staying late with us tonight. I know it's getting on. Um, <laughs> it's Friday night. But no, seriously, thank you very much for coming and making us feel so welcome here in Toronto. It's really good to be here, and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Yeah, and I hope, uh, we hope uh, for both of us, we just want to say it's been, it's been really cool to share the evening with so many of you. So have a really good day and a good evening, and we'll probably see you all tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.